Hi alright, this is going to be a Blu-ray and DVD update. Um, I'm going to be putting a few updates over the next week because I've, I've really got a, a backlog of stuff. Um, this one's a, a mixed bag of DVDs and Blu-rays. I've had a bit of a documentary kick recently, and um, and yeah, and, and they'll be going into the uh, the other update after this as well. There was a sale. Um, Network had a sale, and I picked up a fair few kind of documentaries. I've seen some of the ones on some of these not not all um i picked up um the four volumes of um the world in action series some really really good ones on here um i've seen some of the assassination of martin luther king uh and then we've got i'll, I'll go through kind of all the, um all the kind of volumes i mean these were absolutely they were just chucking these out um another one here um uh, the one on the National Front, I think during the late 70s, early 80s, I've seen some of that. Kind of from uh, euthanasia to Scientology, the minor strike, uh, covert CIA operations in the 70s. Um, there's some good documentaries on YouTube about that. Um, the CIA I might link them to it. There's some really good underhanded. Right, this is another one on here because it's actually got some of the episodes. Um, follows a guerrilla patrol in Portuguese Guinea. Um, I'm just trying to look at Mengele. I've seen some of that, and I've seen some of the Idi Amin one. Uh, Why don't blame Thomas Hamilton? Very shady character as well, Thomas Hamilton. Um, reading about him a lot more than meets the eye about after the Dunblane massacre. Um, yeah, that's another good one. And which is on the? Oh, oh, this one's packed. Um, uh, Siege of Contour, that's about the Monte Guards in, um, uh, in Vietnam, the French um, kind of plantation owners fighting against the uh, Viet Cong. Uh, now I'm sure, is this the one with the. There must be on another disc, the one with yeah, the Bergman 6 as well. Um, I think the UD on oh, the Baden Meinhof complex as well, Baden Meinhof group, so good film that Baden Meinhof complex if you haven't seen it. Yeah, there's some real good ones. He really did some fantastic documentaries um, during this time. There was a real, you know, with the journalists, there was a real kind of... Again, I got this as well. This is for £18. This is a fantastic price as well. So, uh, John Pilger, um, Heroes, the film of John, um, films of John Pilger, 1970 to 2007. Absolutely amazing box set. comes with a book um, as well. Um, we've got... Uh, Behind the facade, reporting the world and memory justice, and documentaries that changed the world. Um, he's one on, I believe it's Nicaragua. Uh, that's very good. He also there's one on um, the Indonesian invasion of East Timor. One of the real, oh, just one of the great crimes of the, of the 20th century. You know, Britain. British government and Australian government knew it was going down. We didn't even bother helping East Timor. I mean, these were people as well who <clears throat> harboured Australian soldiers, you know, at the risk of their lives against the Japanese and, you know, just not... I mean, it, being invaded by, you know, air, land and sea as well and just a very, very good uh, um, film called Balabo, chronicling... Um, what happened to a group of Australian journalists? I'll push that to the side, actually, I won't do that. But that's a fantastic price. Really good documentaries on there. I've got another John Pilger documentary to show another update. Unless I've got it on this one. Oh, no, I have got it on this one. Oh, sorry. Um, but, yeah, uh, called Balabo, about um, in, um, the Indonesian invasion of East Timor. That's a really good film. Um, this is uh, another uh, John Pilger documentary, uh, The War You Don't See. Um... Uh, trace the history of uh, this warfare uh, in general talking uh, following his award winning documentary uh, powerful time investigation of the media's role in war uh, that looks very good as I said I'm on a big kind of documentary kick at the moment now, listen, John, now I've seen some of this I saw some of this on ITV when it was shown I believe it was ITV it's Utopia um the treatment of um, the Australian Aborigine um, kind of the same way um, I'm sure there's a part in this where a lot of Aboriginal children being sexually abused in um, 
children's homes I think partially run by the church I'm not too sure about that but I'm pretty sure it is kind of the same way um, oh the way religion kind of um, held like Ireland in a sort of a grip as well almost you know breaking up families giving them um, you know educating children which was another byword for priests you know basically using them as you know and sex toys you know it's it's really good documentary that but that's really really good um just just it's deeply heartbreaking really put hate in your heart some of the stuff you said just taking advantage of children that way it's horrible um from something really from the sublime to just the ridiculous now coming up this is a uh, empire state i've seen on the back it uh comparisons to long good friday and uh, did it say get car i'm not really too sure did it say get car oh no mona lisa which is complete bullshit because those are two good films this is just an absolute just man when I say uh, Martin Landau just doesn't deserve to be in this film it's a horrible film it's just awful it, it's just, just don't waste your time on it um, really bad really really bad um, I also picked up uh, Tales Out of School uh, four films by David Leyland um, I bought this man I don't, I'm not really familiar with the three of the films Birth of the Nation Flying to the Wind and Rhino I bought this mainly for Alan Clark's Made in Britain with Tim Roth. Absolutely love that film. Really good. But most of the films are all about um, social um, inequality um, and um, social kind of dramas. Um, late 70s, um, early 90s. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy I picked up that. And one I'm really, really uh, happy I got from Network, uh, This Sport in Life. Really just brilliant film. One of Richard Harris's uh, best performances. Directed by Lindsay Anderson, uh, director of Biff. Um, yeah, this is fantastic. Running in the part of the, like, the angry young man movement. Um, it's a great, great film. If you've never seen it, Richard Harris, absolutely just real, real good film. Um, right, I picked up a few French films. Uh, first one, a uh, fantastic cover as well as The Gang, Van der Uh, French crime film, which I'd uh, wholly recommend. Really, really good film. Well worth seeing. Um, I also picked up uh, Andalon, uh, Death um, of a Corrupt Man, also known as a, a, a Twisted Detective. Um, I haven't had a chance to watch this, but uh, Andalon looks great there. Um, yeah, looking forward to seeing that. Um, I also picked up uh, 96 Hours. Um, I'm familiar with the two actors. Um, uh, Neil Zerostrup, he was from um, Profit. Uh, Gerard uh, Lavan, um, he was uh, in the Lyonnais. Yeah, hey, this is really good, really good one. Um, real, a film I haven't seen in many years, man. I need to really revisit this. Because I remember Douglas being absolutely superb. And I, 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 I love Kirk Douglas. Uh, Lust for Life. Um, Yeah, I hear he's fantastic in this. Um, he's a uh, part of Vince Van Gogh. It's, uh, yeah, I, I, I remember him. I need to watch that. It's been a long time since I've seen that film. Um, right, I also picked up, this is a 2001 film. It's a restoration as well of it. Um, the Officer's Room. It's a really nice box, set, actually. It comes with the, the book. Um, this film is based on Mark the gun. Um, it's it's first world war film. Um, kind of discusses um, uh, disfigurement as well in the film. I mean, if you ever seen some of the um, some of the operation techniques they used for skin grafts during the first world war, um, just unbelievable. Um, what damage weaponry can do and what. Um, what doctors did to kind of like rectify I mean some of the um, some of the transformations are quite unbelievable obviously the, the mental thing is a totally different thing altogether but um, physically at least they could have some sort of um, life afterwards so if, if you've ever seen some of the um, the facial damage during the First World War and, and some of the facial reconstructions they did was unbelievable considering you know what they were dealing with and on the scale they were dealing with them um, yeah, I look forward to watching this. Really nice set as well. Um, bought this set quite a while back. I just haven't had a chance to watch it yet, unfortunately. Um, 
savage um, western here now I need to revisit this this is a Dustin Hoffman Martin Balsam I don't know why no, little big man I haven't seen this film in a long time I remember it being pretty savage though um, yeah I remember it being a good one I just haven't seen it in a long time um, got an Elvis film as well um, Elvis uh, Western Flaming Star really love this I saw this film many many years ago uh, my family I always remember it um, you know I, I've, I've, I've got a I'm a big Elvis fan um, anyway um, but I really really this is one of my favourite Elvis films real good one Flaming Star definitely check that out it's a good one um, another Wayne film never seen this so I'll pick it up um, North to Alaska I like wine you can't go wrong with wine yeah I kind of disagree with him sometimes some of the stuff he came out with but you know I'm not going to let that affect my opinion of him as an actor really like look he was the same in everything but I loved him you know but I, I just can't help it um, a classic Wayne film uh, here Rio Grande definitely check that if you ever seen that that's a fantastic western really really good film um, I'm going to move on now to I've got a fairly big part of Twilight Time this has kind of been a build up for ages um, <clears throat> right, first up one of my favourite horror films of the 80s one of my favourite horror films of all time never watched the remake got no interest in watching it um, Fright Night I only wish I'd sold my Twilight Time edition when it was really kind of fetching money I got a decent-ish amount for it you know, but I could have got it for a much better price you know, I was only selling it because this one, you know, is, has come with the extras. Isolated score track as well. Look, that's that's essential for this. This is one of the best eighties. I just the score on this is just amazing. Film's brilliant. Um, really, I mean, the director Tom Holland. I mean, he was just on a just on a roll in the eighties. This child's play, um, class of eighty four. There's another one I'm thinking of. There's another good one in there, and I just can't think what it is. It's going to come to me um, out of nowhere. I can't think what it is at the moment, but I know there's another good one. Tom Holland was at least responsible in a writing capacity or direction. I can't remember. This is an all-time classic. If you've never seen it, definitely check that out. It's a brilliant film. Um, another, uh, this is a John Ford one. Uh, Drums Along the Mohawk. Brilliant film. Love it. Absolutely adore this film. Um, savage in places as well. Um set during um, the early parts of the, um, um, the American Revolution Fond is great in this film brings a real kind of innocence to it he's brilliant great to see Ward Bond as well other kind of um, Ford regulars in this really think the guy I'm not sure the guy's name I think he's an Irish actor he played the irritating preacher in um, How Grim Is My Valley he's very very good in this I'm, I'm not sure the actor's name um, cinematography in this is just absolutely stunning I can't express how good it is great ending as well savage ending uh, again it's, it's it's got a real savagery to it um but yeah the, 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 the transfer on this as well is unbelievable fantastic jumps on the mohawk you can't go wrong with this it's a brilliant film um another great great film uh, based on the exploits of um huey long i think that's his name huey long um he was governor of louisiana right kind of um let's say like a very unscrupulous individual um, All the King's Men just a great great film if you've never seen this please check it out um, it's it's just fantastic really really good definitely check it out I mean Twilight Time have really been releasing some you know good films like um, you know recently last year or so they, um, this film as well this is a this is a great great film um Man for All Seasons uh, set during the reign of Henry VIII um, Henry VIII and his relationship with uh, Thomas More um, yeah this it's it's, uh, it's a fantastic film Paul Schofield is uh, is amazing in this film and, and then um, Robert Shaw it's just Henry VIII just the, just the swagger just he's just just encap just encapsulates everything about the character. Just just it's just fantastic. Um, he's just so brilliant, so larger than life. You can't take your eyes off him. It's, a, it's an absolutely outstanding film. If you've never seen it, definitely check it out. It's a uh, it's utterly brilliant film. Really good. I think if you watched um, 
Wolf Hall, if anyone's been watching that recently, you, if, if you like that, you would definitely enjoy this. I mean, as good as Damien Lewis is as Henry VIII, I mean, Jesus, Robert Shaw, my God, just blows him off the screen. I said disrespect to Damien Lewis, that's just the way it is. It's just amazing. Um, I picked up the... Um, this is the one with the bit... Um, I had the, 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 uh, the original release of Twilight Time. I've re-released it. Um, it's upgraded. Uh, Change of the Center of the Earth. Um, I've never really been too enamored with this film. Um, I like it in parts. Um, I mean, as much as I love like, Mason, sometimes... Um, Mason was a great actor, but he never had... If I had one critique of him, not much range. He was normally Mason in everything. And you know, I mean, that, that's that's there's no problem with that. But there's other problems with the film as well. It's it, it hasn't aged well, in my opinion. I'm not on about the effects. Nothing to do with that. Just sometimes it's because uh, I'll compare it to another film of that ilk in a minute, which I, I absolutely adore. Um, but yeah, it, it's not my favourite film of this this genre. Um, but one of my favourites, and this is an absolutely outstanding film. H.G. Wells first Men in the Moon. Um, I love the story as well and even though the film has added a little kind of modern kind of twist on it kind of like with a bit of a Cold War vibe plus definitely a bit more some analogies but with the um, say a post kind of colonialism kind of questions kind of brought around it it's a really just great adventure film the effects i tell you what the effects are absolutely outstanding in this film Harry Harrison does a, just a great job um, Edward Judd you know great in his own you know quite a dislikable character in many ways um, Lionel Jeffries is just I can't believe he's aging here I, I think he's about 37 or 38 and well, I mean he, <laughs> he looks about 70 but he's just brilliant and it's, 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 it's a film with so many layers as well you know it's you know when you're watching it you you truly no I won't spoil that I was going to talk a bit too much into the film it's just a great film definitely just watch it it's fantastic film it's one of my real favourite of mine it's brilliant put it on a Sunday afternoon just watch it it's, it's brilliant really good film first man the moon now this is um this is almost like a spiritual successor to the search it's got the same sort of story um kidnapped um uh, Comanche kidnapping um, various um, white um, homesteaders. Um, it's like the most savage successor to it. It's two road together, it's forward again. We've got uh, Richard Woodmark and uh, James Stewart. I think the chemistry between these two are amazing. Um, we've got the guy as well who plays Scar in The Searchers. He's playing the Comanche chief in it. Can't think of the actor's name. Um, does a good job. He's aged quite significantly since this point. I think it's a fair few. I think it's about years this film. I think it's 59 or 60. I'm not too sure. 61. But it's it's um, a lot more honest rule showing the more savagery of the frontier. The ending is is a uh, very savage, very very savage for the time. Um, Woody Strode as well turns up in this as well as a Comanche. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's a great film. Again, cinematography is brilliant, as you'd expect from a Ford film. But it's a uh, it's it's a great one. It's really really good. I would thoroughly recommend it. Very very goes against the conventions. This western, it's a real good one, particularly for the time. Um, another great western as well. Brilliant. One of my favourite um, Newman films. I think he's I think he's fantastic in his films. Hombre. Um Newman um, was an adopted Apache member. Um, gets a, a house kind of a left to him goes back into town and ends up in one way or another on a stagecoach which um, gets robbed by um, Richard Boone and his gang Martin Balsam's in this as well he's very good Richard Boone plays a real shit in this he's fantastic just the scene when he's bullying the soldier out of his ticket and just no one helps him it's just just great I can imagine Wayne having a real problem with that Wayne always had that problem with um, he'd always believe in the old west everyone would help one another that's what his real down on high noon was very strange character Wayne some of this, you know he almost like believed he lived in that kind of like western life even though we all know people and their nature sometimes can be cowardly this is a fantastic film definitely watch it love the scene at the beginning when those two cowboys are giving the Apaches grief and 
and Newman just smashes one right with the stock of his gun, smashes the glass into his face, you know, you know, pay for the drinks. It's a great film. Definitely check that out. You never seen that film. It's fantastic. A lot of good films in this update, I tell you. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm not running down films as much. Um, I also picked up a film I've never seen before. I want to check this out. I love the cover art on this. Another Western, um, Western Adventure by the Bullet. Another James Stewart. This is absolutely just amazing film. Again, another savage one in places. Man from Laramie. Really, I mean, when they uh, when they burn um, his wagon train and you know they kill a lot of his um, kill his stock off as well. It's, you know, it's really really brutal. It's just a really really good film. Anthony Mann. Um, great ending as well. You know, it's really. Yeah, New Mexico ranchers who make the uh, the tale of King Lear look like a children's story. Yeah, it's, it's really got its layers in this one. It's a real good one. I love Jim. I love Jimmy Stewart. Just can't help myself. It's uh, absolutely love him. Right, uh, another Wayne one. Um, I thought I wasn't gonna like this. I've seen two. I'm trying to think of the other John Wayne modern one in the seventies. Oh, God. oh, not Mc. Is it McHugh? I can't really think. And whatever it was, it was bad. This is this is very very good. Brannigan, love the cover out on that. John Wayne, American cop, comes over to Britain um, after uh, a criminal in. Oh, I've completely. No, no, Melfry. Oh, John Vernon. John Vernon is after Melfry as the um, his lawyer. Uh, teams up with Richard Attenborough, who's absolutely the, the camera shooting Richard Attenborough and Wayne in this is really funny. The bar brawl in this is brilliant. Um, James Booth turns up old hooky from a uh, Sulu as well. This is a, a real good one, good laugh. I had a real fun time watching this. Good dummy death near the end as well. I'm always a fan of dummy deaths. Um, now this is another great mercenary film. Love Wild Geese and I love this film as well. This is more the serious. You know, the Wild Geese is like the action mercenary. Dogs of War is like the serious man's kind of the serious mercenary film. Walken's brilliant in this film. The cast is great. I love the, I love the whole network and the story of how, of how mercenaries got things done. How they, you know, the various networks where they go through, um, you know, they go through Spain and I think they end up. Is did they end up in the south of France? They end up in Marseille at some point on their way to, you know, to topple um. Uh, dictatorship in Africa uh, it's just ah, oh, so good really really good film um, really really good absolutely I absolutely love one of my real favourite dummy deaths in this one as well um, you know it when you see it it's a great film this Dogs of War this is um, the full version as well just a brilliant film really good film so many good films <laughs> so I keep saying there's more to come as well uh, Under Fire um Nick Nolte, uh, wartime photographer, um, Gene Hackman, his boss, kind of a love triangle, triangle going on, um, backdrop of a Nicaraguan uh, civil war. Um, Ed Harris playing a mercenary in this, he's fantastic. Uh, yeah, uh, Jean Louis Trinidad as well plays a sort of a, mm, a spook slash in a CIA kind of um, operative working out in Nicaragua savage film I mean um, I, I don't want to spoil it actually I, I was going to reveal a certain kind of plot development I'm going to, I'm going to leave it there but I, 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 I won't reveal that um, it, it's a great film definitely check that one out good and the next one I'm showing as well is a good kind of partner to watch kind of after it um, more savage definitely the, the next one um, Salvador Oliver Stone I think one of James Wood's best performances I think it's one of Oliver Stone's best films absolutely love this film um, uh, showing with the, the probably much more much more savage El, um, El Sal Salvadorian Civil War um, John Savage as well. I really figure what a great actor John Savage is. Really, he's he's fantastic in this film. As is ja um, James Belushi. He does a brilliant job. I I I. It's so weird, you know. In a really savage film, I'm in pieces laughing at the scene. The first meeting between James Belushi, James Belushi and um, James Woods after when they meet John Savage down there for the first time. James Woods knows him already. Uh, <laughs> uh, just. Belushi has almost a sort of a panic attack and wants to kind of go back um, over the border to the US. It's great. It's fantastic film. Um, it's good deleted scenes on here as well. For, um, 
yeah it's just unbelievable you know it just it ends in typical kind of Estonian style as well um, and last two things I've got in this update so it's been a bit of a long one um, I've got a Danish um, comedy series uh, Clown it's the entire box set um, I watched the film I was absolutely in pieces laughing at it um, I've watched around six, seven episodes of it. It's not for everyone. If you're easily offended, please don't watch it. It's like a curb your enthusiasm, but much more brutal, in my opinion. God, he's mate. Casper, such such a wanker in this. <laughs> um, it's really, really good, really funny. But again, if you if if your humour is not kind of acidic and almost downright immoral like mine is, I I, I wouldn't kind of recommend it. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's, it's, it's very, very, very funny. And then last but uh, not least, uh, it's a Korean film. Um, and a film I thoroughly enjoyed. One of the best films I've seen in a long time. Um, starring a Choi Min Sik. Um, it's uh, the Admiral Roy and Currents. Uh, Choi plays a Korean Admiral, um, Yi Sun Shin, um, attempting the repel. Uh, part of a Japanese naval invasion. Uh, the war had been raging. Uh, Japanese invaded Korea in uh, 1592. Um, using it, the Joseon Kingdom was uh, allied with um, Chinese, and they were using the Japanese were using it as a base to invade China. Um, and it was around five years of kind of savage warfare. Um, Yi Sun Shin is uh, attempting, thoroughly outnumbered, attempting to make a stand against uh, the second part of the, the Japanese invasion fleet. Um, it's a real breathtaking film. Cinematography, direction, acting, absolutely top notch. I've seen some criticism, um, a little apparently reported jingoism within um, the film, but you know it's, a, it's an important event in Korean history. I mean, this Yi Sun Shin is the national hero of Korea, and I've also heard about exaggerations in Japanese atrocities. Look, I've actually um, researched a fair bit about this war, and I can categorically state <laughs> Japanese atro atrocities were horrific. They did happen. They made a habit of cutting ears and um, noses off Korean captives. I'm sure in in one of the reports they took around 190,000. I think they believe 190,000 Koreans died and around 30,000 Chinese died in the conflict. They raped, they pillaged, they murdered at will, and you know, I mean, they kind of got what was coming to them. So, you know, as, as most invaders should. Um, you know, I, I, I don't want to spoil the battle in any way. It's just a breathtaking battle. Um, but yeah, read about the conflict. It's very, very interesting. You know, if you know, this is you know the, the naval exploits of this man were you know you know Nelson in in brilliance. You know, this, this is you know this is the Koreans you know Trafalgar. Not particularly this battle, but you know definitely the subsequent battle and uh, previous battle, probably in 1592. But um, you know, it's a film that should be admired. It's um, details fantastic the, 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 there's so many absolutely just amazing moments in this I mean just the fighting is thor thoroughly savage um, you know the, the armour looks fantastic on both the costume of both the Japanese and Koreans and then they've used mostly Korean actors for the Japanese but you know um, I'm you know I'm not going to I, I think they they, they they did a good job um I'm not sure in regard to language, but I think in you know serious of, of their acting, they didn't over exaggerate. They didn't make the Japanese out to be thoroughly evil. They just you know they they did their roles really really well, and um, John and Seek is absolutely incredible. I couldn't think of a better guy playing him. He's he's just fantastic. The bit where the scene where his turtle ship is burning. It's just I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the second film, which will be a prequel of his early life. And, you know, we'll see the turtle ships then. If you know what the turtle ships are, you know, do a little bit of reading about it. It's, you know, very interesting, very kind of um, an innovative, uh, an innovative um, style of fighting against them. Um, you know, a military power who'd been, you know, seasoned in war, could, 
you know fighting inside the Sengoku Jadal period for you know more than 60 years so yeah um, great film can't recommend it enough definitely watch it fantastic and yeah definitely watch that film it's a brilliant film and so that's the end of the update um, I'll be back with another update in uh, the next couple of days thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and I'll see you later